the grass is greener is an ironic statement, whatever that means. don't get bonked, cos I'm right up here, safe in my lookout. I like being up here, high over Pipkins, so I'm lucky to have my lookout. Though there was a time when I didn't see how lucky I was. One day, Tom and Topoff had been shopping. Tom had brought lots of things at the shops, and his bags were very heavy. Tom, I'm tired. Well, it's not very far now, Topoff. Can you carry me? How can I? I've got these bags to carry. But I'm tired. Well, shall we get a bus home? Oh, yes. Can we go upstairs? If you want to. Don't forget, Tom, you said that we could go upstairs. I won't. arrived at the bus garage, the place where they parked them for the night. It was time for Tom and Topoff to get off. There you are, Topoff. Much nicer than walking all the way home now, wasn't it? Topoff? Topoff, where, where are you? I'm up here! Come on, Topoff. This is as far as the bus goes. I don't want to. I want to stay here. I like it. But you can't stay there. Why not? It's nice up here. It's all cosy and warm. Top off. Come on. Wouldn't it be lovely if we lived on a bus? Can we? Can we what? Live on a bus. Of course we can't live on a bus, Top off. People don't live on buses. Why don't they? Because buses aren't made for living on. Buses are made for taking people from one place to another. Come on. Oh. Come on. Well, I'm coming. On their way home, Tom and Topov passed the fire station. That's where the firemen live, isn't it, Tom? No, Topov. That's where the firemen work. They keep their fire engines there, but they don't live there. They all have houses to go to when they finished work. But supposing someone's house catches on fire when the firemen have gone home to bed, there'll be nobody to put it out. Yes, there will, Topov. They take it in turns to go home to their beds. There'll always be some firemen at the fire station, even at night. Could we live in a fire station, Tom? It would be ever so exciting. Of course we couldn't, Topov. People don't live in fire stations. We'd only get in the fireman's way, and we'd stop them from going out and putting out fires. And that would be awful, wouldn't it? Yes, I suppose it would. It's a shame, though, because I'd like to live in a fire station, or on a bus, or in a sweet shop. And you can't live there either, Topov. Sweet shops aren't for living in. They're for selling sweets and ice creams and lollies. And for buying them. Right. And for buying them. Come on. Let's get home. Hartley will be getting tea ready. Hartley had got the tea ready. And he was very hungry. Hungry? I'm starving. 
Oh, if I have to wait much longer, I'll, I'll wither away. At last, and where have you been? We've been on it's a bus. It's really not good enough, you know, for a hard-working hare. It really isn't. My tummy's rumbling like mad. Sorry, oh. Hartley. We had a lot to get, you know. Yeah, we came home on a bus. Did you indeed. All right, then. You can start. Thank you. Tom? Yes, Topo? Please, may I have a carrot? A carrot? A carrot? I didn't know you liked carrots, Topo. Well, I don't know if I do. I mean, I've never had one, but they sound nice. Sound nice? Don't be silly, little monkey, Topo. Carrots don't make noises. How can they sound nice? They do when you bite them. They go crunch. Of course you can have a carrot, Topo. Here you are. Yeah, that's mine. You've just pinched my dinner. Stop grousing, Hartley. There are plenty more in the cupboard. Take a bite, Top Off. Come on, bite it. Hard. What's the matter? I can't. It's too tough. My teeth won't go in. I think I'll stick to bananas. They're easier to eat. Maybe you're right, Top Off. Because... Oh, he does like a glorious banana. Oh, he does like to peel and peel the skin. Oh, he does like to get a great big bunch, bunch, bunch. Of my favourite food for my lunch, lunch, lunch. Oh, some people like a carrot for breakfast. Some people like a sandwich for their tea. But when all is said and done, there is really only one. And that's a banana, a banana for me. That's right, Top Wolf. You stick to bananas, which you know you like. But Hartley's carrot looked nicer than my banana. Oh, well, other people's things often look nice, but that doesn't mean they are nice. Tom? Oh, yes, Hartley? Can I have a banana? After tea, Topov was up in his lookout, looking out across the yard. Up here, I can see everything. I can watch the gate to see who comes in and out. But if nobody comes in and out, that's boring. When I look the other way, I can see the door into the kitchen. And the chute down into Pig's cellar. Pig is lucky. I wish I had a cellar. Hmm. This is much better than my lookout where everyone can see you. Nobody can see you down here. You can do what you like. doing down here? Well, I just wanted to see if Pig's cellar was a better place than my lookout. And is it? No! No, it's all scary! All the noises down here frightened me! Yeah, well, those are Pig's experiments. You mustn't go near those. Don't worry, I won't. Why don't you go up to your lookout and play up there? I'm tired of my rotten old lookout. I'm going to find somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to chop some wood in the yard, Top of. Do you want to help? Uh, no, thanks, Tom. I'm going to stay here. Here? Oh, I like it here. It's better than my silly old lookout. Oh, all right, then. Please yourself. Now, what shall I do? I don't know. Well, what do you do in the kitchen except eat at mealtimes? And it isn't a mealtime. I'll play at shops on Tortoise's Till. Tortoise's till was just like the ones he'd seen in shops, but to make it work... You have to know what all the numbers are, and I can't count very well, so I don't know which thing to press. <sighs> That's no good, then. So what can I do? Hartley Study! That's the place! There are lots of things to play with in there! Hartley, can I play with your telephone? Of course you can't. Telephones aren't for playing with. Well, can't I just pretend?
pretend to talk to someone on the telephone. It wouldn't do any harm. Wouldn't do any harm? Look, somebody might want to telephone me to tell me something really important and wouldn't be able to because you were monkeying with the telephone. Go away. Spoil sport. Well, if he won't let me play with the telephone, I know. Ah, Mrs. McNamara. Yes, I was just ringing you to see if by any chance you were thinking of ringing me about, well, you know, anything important. Oh, just a minute, please, Mrs. McNamara. Top off. Will you stop playing with that typewriter? I don't know what's got into that monkey. He's always wanting to be in other people's rooms. But nothing was the matter with Topov now, because... I don't want to be anywhere else. I can do what I like up here, and there's no one to get cross with me, and there are no spooky noises like there were down in Pig Cellar. My lookout is the best place in the world. I shall stay here forever. Or until somebody says... It's... Time... To start a new day... With a story? With a story. Oh, oh good. good. This story is called The Grass is Greener. Now, once upon a time, there was a farmer who had some sheep. The sheep were very happy living in their field, but Farmer Giles wasn't so happy. Just across the river was another field where the grass looked greener and tastier. Oh, if only I could take my sheep across to the other field, said Farmer Giles. Well, why doesn't he? There's a bridge in the picture. He could cross the bridge. Because living on the bridge was a nasty, evil troll. A troll? A what? What's a troll? It's a little monster who eats sheep whole. Oh, this is just pretend, isn't it, Tom? Oh, of course it is, Hartley. There isn't really such a thing as a troll. Oh. This is just a story, you see. Good. Go on, then. Now, one day, Farmer Giles decided that he'd try to cross the bridge, even though there was a troll living there. The first sheep to cross the bridge was the smallest one. Ah, uh, a lamb. Well, probably, yes. Now, the troll stood right in front of the little sheep and stared into his eyes. Ugh! Is that the troll? Yes. Isn't it horrible? Mm. If you cross my bridge, little sheep, said the troll, I'll gobble you up for my dinner. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, Mr. Troll, said the smaller sheep. There's another bear sheep behind me, and he's much bigger and much tastier than me. Really? said the troll. That sounds interesting. And he let the little sheep cross the bridge and go into the new field. Hooray! Mm. All the other sheep, one by one, did the same. But what did the last sheep tell the troll? Well, he told the troll that Farmer Giles was going to cross next. Now the troll liked to eat farmers even more than he liked to eat sheep. Oh, dear. But Farmer Giles had an idea, and he hoped it would work. So do I. He told the troll that he was old and tough. His wife was going to cross the bridge, and she would taste better. I didn't know Farmer Giles had a wife. That's the point, you see. He didn't. The troll waited and waited and waited, but no wife appeared. Oh, I bet he was angry. Yes, he was. He was so angry that he jumped up and down with rage. In fact, he jumped so hard, he made the bridge collapse. And he fell into the water and was drowned. And they lived happily ever mm. after. Mm. I like that story. Mm. Oh, but it's not finished, Top of, you see. They didn't live happily ever after. They didn't? No. Because the new field wasn't full of lush green grass. It only looked like lush green grass from a distance. Most of the field was made up with dark green, nasty tasting weeds. It wasn't half as good as their old field. Oh, dear. Why didn't they go back? Well, they couldn't, because there was no bridge. The troll had broken it. Right. And that's the end of the story. Goodbye. <laughs>